Okay, the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this thing off. Uh, I want that off there so, because I'm gonna initially, later on I'm gonna put a plate in here and I need this off so I can drill a hole and get my burner down through there. Okay, the next step we're going to do is we're going to take this shield off this burner, because all I want really is the burner. And so there's the, the burner itself. What I'm going to try to do is get a wrench down in here and get that loosened up. All right, we're going to try a pair of pliers and just see if we can clamp it enough. So now what we've done is I've gotten a hole saw that's big enough that will fit in here so that this can I need to drill through this enough that I can stick this all the way down to the bottom. And so I'm going to drill this out and this internal one out um, to get to the bottom. But before I do that, I'm going to find the center of this and center punch it so that my drill won't walk all over and do crazy things. This will help it cut through there. Whew. Okay, so there's the first piece. And then the first question is, does our burner fit down through there? And it would fit all the way through there. So that's a good that's good news. Okay, so what we've managed to do yeah. is we have cut through three layers all the way to the bottom. And I've drilled a hole in the bottom. I think you can see that. There, and that hole will tell us exactly where the center of that is so that I can drop this in there and um, put that down through. Right, so we got the hole that we drilled all the way through in the bottom here. I'm going to drill a bigger hole in that. Because I should be able to stick this through and have the end of it come just for our prototype right now. We're just going to this and if this does work what we'll end up doing is we'll get something different on here but right now I just want to see if this is going to do what I want it to do okay so this is what we got happening we put the burner down through there and this is just a test fire to see how it'll work and so I got it sticking up through there I'm going to turn that on put a match down through the top try to get that flame lit see what happens. Okay, so first we're going to turn the valve on and it's looking kind of janky right now but it's going to get worse. We almost had a flame. Okay, it means more gas. Okay, let's do it again. Oh yeah, that was good. Okay, now we're going to light it up. Okay, you can hear the propane coming. Okay, look down in there. And so now you can see we've got a flame going on. And it's rocking. That's exciting. Now if there's a piece of metal over that, a plate over that, then it would force all of the air to come out of here. I was thinking about having a professional who can weld stainless steel well a stainless steel ring on here but what I think I'm going to do instead is I think I'm going to put a piece of eighth inch flat on this with some recessed bolts and that way if anything ever goes wrong I would be able to take the bolts out and and access it um, because you never know when I got to redo that burner or whatever and if they weld this on I'd never get back down in there. Okay, so we're going to cut a six inch piece of metal out to put on top of the stove We're starting construction on the frame here. Got the first piece. Okay, so you can see I got it happening there. There is the bottom frame that the stove fits in, and it fits tight. I like the fit on it. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll 
build another frame like that. Build another frame exactly like this, like that, and then we'll put little legs to it, and that'll jack it up a little bit from the ground and give enough space so that um, our valve can fit here. And your bimetal, it has a coating over it that you need to grind off if you're going to weld well. So we're going to take a little, we're going to grind that off just the edges where the weld's going to be. do a test burn on our stove and you can see so far I've gotten this welded up so that's solid now I got my burner all the way down there in the bottom of it um, right now all I want to really do is see if it will burn well and how hot it is I'm thinking about trying to get two of those burners and put in it one mistake that I found that I did make on that is I scavenged that burner off some stove that I'd gotten a while ago and I've come to find that it has some oddball thread in it and so I'm gonna have to buy new burners for it. These burners are only 10 bucks though so I'm gonna be able to get by pretty good. One of the problems that I'm seeing that I have I don't know if compartment it only goes halfway and so this piece here there's a there's a um, solid plate across here and what I'd like to be able to do is put the burner even with this because this is going to get put on right there so I have somewhere to put a kettle or whatnot you know and I want that burner to be really close to it so it'll get that really hot and then the second burner I want to put in I want to put in all the way down here and this compartment's open all the way so this would heat this up some of it will go through these baffles and come up a lot of the heat would have to come over come straight up this one which I've removed the baffles and then it'd be able to go over to this if I drill holes in this and so that's kind of what I'm thinking about doing but for right now what I want to do is start it up get it heating up and see how hot it really gets so before I just checked it out to make sure it did work so we're gonna go ahead and get that started and see what happens. see the burner down there and it's blue so now I'm going to put this on there. So it can't come out there. Now it has to work through the system and come up through here. So we're going to see how hot that gets. I'm going to... Okay, so it's been about five minutes. You can tell I'm impatient, right? And so when I look at this, first you can see there's smoke coming out of here. And that's probably just oil and residue from when I was drilling holes and doing things. And so that'll burn off. But when it has a chimney on here, it won't matter. Um, but this is... There's good heat coming out of there. Welcome back to my stove project. And so I've been working on this propane stove to put in a tent. Um, I initially salvaged this out of a dump. Um, it's a heat exchanger from a Toyo stove. I'd initially salvaged this burner off of a kind of a Coleman propane stove and this screws into there and it turns out that the threads that are inside this match really no threads that you can get parts for at least in Alaska and so that really um, I and I built this base and when I built the base that wasn't too bad it fits the stove really nicely I'll end up bolting this stove into there probably um, and so the, I started off with a bang, and then once I couldn't find threads that this would fit, and I couldn't put it into here, which is where it was initially going to go, I kind of got stalled out. And then I finally broke down, ordered some parts, which really weren't all that horribly expensive. Um, I ordered two burners that they told me would be a standard thread on the back that I'd be able to find pieces for. And as it turns out, um, this doesn't fit any threading that I can get anywhere, at least in Alaska, maybe down in the lower 48, you have access to other things, but I could not find any pipe that that would go to. So that stalled me out. Um, at the same time, I had ordered some valves that come with thermocouplers. The thermocoupler makes it so that if it's got a, a thermometer in here, and if it is not hot enough, it shuts the gas off. So you have to hold this button in like this and then it makes the gas flow in there and once the thermocoupler inside the thing gets hot you can let off of that and it keeps the valve open 
if you run out of propane, it automatically shuts the propane off so you don't have a leak or something bizarro happening. And I ordered this um, this barbecue starter thinking I'll put this inside of there and be able to ignite it then easily. Um, and then once these got here, this is not a standard thread. Um, nothing in Alaska fits it. And so I went out and I found some um, little couplers that would go to things, but this does not thread into that. Um, so kind of stalled out there. So what I did was I measured the threads on here and found that there's some funky weird pitch that is foreign to, to pretty much everything, I guess. So what I ended up doing then was I bought a drill bit that's a bizarro size. It is um, actually um, 33 64 size. And I'm gonna drill out, and I'm gonna drill out the inside of this. And then I bought a tap, and I'm gonna tap where I drill it out, da 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 da. And then I should be able to, then I should be able to screw this into that and then this is a standard propane pipe thread and then I should be able to run the rest of my piping and stuff. Okay, so I've moved this into a vise now. I have my tap, I put it in a holder and I'm going to start it in here. I'm going to start it as vertical as I can. I'm going to take several turns in here. It feels like it's getting started. And what you do is you start it, and then you got to break it, back it up, and we'll do that all the way in there. The thing about propane is propane is at a very, very low pressure, and so not to say we don't want these threads to be good, but it is more forgiving than if we were running some kind of high pressure thing. And for the moment of truth, just to see if our burner goes in there. If it doesn't go in there, then that was a complete waste of time. Ho, ho. And so, I would say that's pretty darn successful. And so I'm going to do the other one, and then we're going to go get parts for this and see if we can get it put together. That's awesome. <laughs> So that the stove will fit in it and I have drilled some holes in there so that the flame can go through and oxygen will get there so I'm going to go ahead and paint this frame um, I have all the pieces here to put it together and so the next time we look at this hopefully it'll be together okay so you can see I've made a lot of progress with plumbing this stove the lighting isn't great I'm going to turn this on its side And you see the, there's two valves here. They're connected here. This is going to be propane coming in. I got thermocouplers wired in here. There's a burner here. And right now what I have to do is connect this burner up on top of here. Um, and we'll take a look at that. Yeah, from here over to here, because this is the burner and this is the valve for that one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll take a look at this stove. The first thing I'm going to do is, I'm running brass, and so I put a fitting on here, I have brass tubing, I'm going to put this little clamper thing on here, and have this stick out just a snubby snub. There, and I have this flare tool I'm going to put on here, and this goes into there, just like that, and then we just tighten it down and flares it out. That fits then on here, and you screw this on there. I guess if I cut it right there, we're going to be pretty close. And the way that this thing works is you just twist it around here. And now, 
before we put that other piece on, we'll put this nut on. Okay, so we're going to take this off of there. Okay, we've got a mega fork in there. And so now if everything goes right, so with all these fittings, I've put thread lock on them. Um, just so they don't come loose, because this thing's going to get, hopefully, the living tar pounded out of it. Going down the trail to cool, fun places. As I want that to fit nice and snug like that. Okay, we got both the valves here to turn it on. That gets the gas flowing Getting right here. So it'll come all the way here to gas. Then it goes to the valves. It's got thermocouplers. These thermocouplers go up in next to the burner here and they have to be hot to let gas flow through. I put them both on the same burner because it wasn't a good way to get to this burner here. Here's the burner and it's solid. So I got one burner here. I'm going to put a plate over the top of this so I can put a pan on there and boil water or whatever. And then the other burner is in this lower chamber here. And this is baffled, so it has to come up through here. I have cut a hole in the bottom of it because it's going to need oxygen going in. And um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, so we're close. I got a little piping down underneath here. I know that I have some gas leaks, so what I'm going to do, they probably have some cool gas tester, but here's my gas tester. I'm going to turn the gas on here. Right now the valves are turned off. And I'm just going to, okay, so there we got a, a leak there. So I'm going to take that apart and Permatex it. I've already taken that one apart and permatexed it. Okay, so looks like I got a leak all the way back here, so I'm gonna to to take that off and permatex it. The other thing that I'm gonna do though is I'm going to change this out. Right now I don't have a regulator on it. I'm gonna put a regulator on that. Um, and hopefully that will lower the pressure going into it. But meanwhile, I still want to I'm still going to take this apart and this apart and permatex those. Um, and then I will check out the regulator hose. Finally, I am back at this stove build. I've hooked a regulator up to this. I permatex some fittings. And so I have the gas on, and so I'm going to check all these fittings. And we've seen this before. Last time it wasn't very good. Hopefully this time it will be. I'm just kind of running this flame by all of the fittings. And if there's any of them that have gas leaking out, as you've seen before, they will, will certainly ignite up. Okay, so life is good right there. We have no flameage on any of our fittings. The regulator's on, the gas is on. So the next question is, will the thing work correctly? Will the thermocouplers work? Will it even light? Now I'm going to push in the valve here and turn it. And you can hear propane coming out. Well, you can't now. Can you hear that? Listen. Hopefully you can hear that. That's what's supposed to happen. So it doesn't matter where I turn this at. No gas is coming through because of the thermocoupler. When you push it, it overrides the thermocoupler. And so I'm going to go ahead and light this thing. And Holy smokes. Okay, that's because there was propane in it, which is what's supposed to happen. Okay, so you can hear the propane going, and I can see down through there, I can see they're burning in that back burner, and that's that lower burner down here. And now I'm gonna let off this, and it continues to burn, so that means the thermocoupler is holding it open, and has gas going in there. That's exciting. And now that the, both the thermocouplers are on that burner, this front burner should light as well. Let's check that out. Oh, I can hear it going. And it lit by itself, which is what's supposed to happen. You can already see that we got smoke coming out of there. Oh, oh mercy, that's hot. Okay, so, wowza. This kind of exceeds expectations right now. 
So let's turn this off. I don't want it to get too hot. Okay, both those are off. Now, that's super exciting. This thing is already hot, hot, hot. Okay, so I've went ahead and installed my propane barbecue starter. You can see it goes up right through here and up into the ignition chamber. And so we're gonna go ahead and try that out. I'm gonna go ahead and push the propane valve and get propane flowing and then ignite it. Now I'm holding the button down over here because you have to get those thermocouplers hot so that they'll continue to flow. That should be enough. So I've let off of it and it's still going. That's super cool. You should be able to look through there and see it flowing. And so I now have a working system and so I can put my plate on here and then I'm gonna go ahead and paint this, I've decided. And so this is stainless steel. So the first thing you have to do with stainless steel is you have to acid etch it. And so I bought these wipes and they're just gonna wipe this down um, and then it etches the metal. And then once the metal is etched, um, then you can go ahead and paint it. It's and so I'm gonna open this up and I've not used these before, but the guy at the paint store told me that they worked out pretty slick, so we'll see. And basically what the directions say is, you wipe it down, the metal should be wet for at least one minute. And then, um, and then they, it, it goes ahead and dries. And once it dries, and then it etches it. And so we're going to give that a shot. And I don't really know totally what kind of chemical this is. It's some kind of acid. Might as well have gloves on, right? And so I'm just going to wipe this down like that. And I want everything to get wet. And the hard part is going to be really getting around all these pieces of pipe. And so I think each one of these, I'm going to basically try to do like this. I'm going to do every one of those like that and wipe the whole thing down. I'll catch up with you when we get to the next step. Okay, so I've taped it off. I've just put a bag down here because I don't want all that to get painted. And I'm going to use this paint. It's called Flame Proof Primer. And then we're also going to use color paint with it. But this is supposed to be good to... 1300 to 2000 degrees. It's really made for like headers on a car. A very high, very high temperature. So I'm going to use gray. I'm going to paint this thing eventually after I prime it. I'm going to paint it red. And then the cap that goes on here, I'm going to paint black. So I finished priming it. And I think it looks pretty good. The hard part was just getting all these pipes just right, so I had to spray it from lots of different angles. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting color on it. Okay, so I've finished painting my stove with the heat paint. And there's a lot of ceramic in this heat paint apparently, and it says now you're supposed to cure it. Well, we finally reached the time that I'm gonna be able to put this plate on here. And so the way I'm going to put that on is I've drilled, I've already pre-drilled it with holes. And I'm going to use rivets to, um, to stick that on there. So let me show you how a rivet works if you don't know. So this is a rivet gun. This is a rivet. And so the way a rivet works is this thing here is connected to this. And when you scrunch it up with a rivet gun, it scrunches it up here. And then it, it binds things together. Let's look at one. So I'm squeezing the rivet gun and see how it's pulling it up in there. So we're going to go ahead and drill this top out and put rivets on it. So what I want to do is get the first one done really well. And once that one's done, then I'm going to go ahead and put a rivet in it and it'll hold it in place. Then I'll do one more and then the whole thing will be um, pretty solid and I'll be able to do the rest of them without having to shift around. Okay, so that is on there, super tight. There, and then I'll drill this one, and then I do all the rest, so we'll check back when this is done. Okay, first official firing. 
and we're holding it in until the pilot lights get hot. Okay, I'm gonna turn the other one on. Okay, so both the burners are going now. Okay, so after I painted this, I initially fired it up and let it burn for a very brief period of time and then it started, the paint started smoking. So I turned it off and I did that a couple of times. And then I went back and I put it in the oven at 250 for 20 minutes and then 450 and then 600, and let it cool down in between. And then supposedly it was supposed to be good to go. Since that time, I have probably fired it 35 times and I'll warm it up and then let it cool down for 20 minutes, warm it up, let it cool down for 20 minutes, probably 35 times. And, um, and in between, I'll warm it up until it starts smoking. And so it's kind of got to the point now where um, I need to be able to use this in my tent. And so I'm gonna fire it up and I'm just gonna let it go. If it burns all the paint off, fine. If it leaves some of the paint on, fine. But, um, you know, it, it does appear as though this paint did not do what it said it would do, but we'll see. So I finished my stove project, and you can tell the paint didn't turn out unblemished. However, the main purpose of this tent stove is to warm my tent in the winter, and I think it's gonna do a fine job of that. And so I'm happy with the way it turned out. Maybe not exactly the way it looks, but I think that it'll be fine. Um, don't forget to subscribe, and supposedly there's a notification button somewhere, so you never miss a video. Be safe out there.